This is how you make your own super healthy, unprocessed energy bars for cycling. I'm gonna do it like a pro, because joining us is longtime World Tour nutritionist, Nigel Mitchell. Nigel, you're going to show us how to make two snacks for riding, right? Energy balls and then the pro's favourite, rice cakes. The recipes to which can be found along with a whole host of others in our new book, The Plant-Based Cyclist, which is like a comprehensive guide to successfully riding on a plant-based diet. And it's been written by Nigel, you'll be pleased to hear, as opposed to... Well, one of us, basically. Uh, right, should we start with the rice cakes? Rice cakes are great to start with because we have to pre-prepare the rice cakes okay. and then we take them out of the rider. So rice cakes, as it suggests, is basically based on rice. Okay. And what we're using here is just a, a short grain pudding rice. Okay. Uh, so the, the rice is really good from an energy point of view because of its structure. Uh, basically, the way we digest the rice is a really good carbohydrate provider. Also, because there's twice as much water than what there is the rice, it also provides fluid as well. Okay, and you've got it in, in a water bottle. Oh, yeah. why, why have you done that? Well, it, it's, it's a little tip that I actually learned from the Swanyers. Uh, because in, at the races, the Swanyers, they'll be making four packs of rice cakes a day. And they use big bags of rice. And you've got to get the measurements quite right. And what they found is that a bit on of rice is exactly 500 grams. So it's 500 grams to a litre of water. So the simple measurement is a bottle of rice, two bottles of water. Nice. So step one then is we've actually got to cook our rice. One part rice, two parts water. You can do it on a hob, but we're going to use a rice cooker. Yeah, so rice cookers, I mean, it's the thing that, that I recommend. So if you've not got a rice cooker, put it on your Christmas list or your birthday list. They're really good. They're, you can use them for everything. Uh, normally a, a pro to a team will have at least six rice cookers. No. Yeah, you can't survive without a rice cooker now. So they'll have two on the truck and they'll have at least one, maybe even two on the bus. So rice cookers are absolutely essential piece of kits. And you can get them as cheap as, as like 15, 16 pounds. You don't have to have a, a super a super fancy one. Okay. So yeah, the rice has got to be cooked. And the great thing with it is everything goes into the rice cooker. So there's okay. technically this is so easy. Okay, so we put the rice and the water in and then we need to add the rest of the ingredients and we need something that's gonna help hold the rice together. Okay. So for the plant-based version, uh, I'm using cream coconut and uh, this is an ideal pack size. So this is 200 grams. These are a standard pack of cream coconut. And part of the idea with all these recipes is that the ingredients should be available in your local stores. Uh, we do find though that sometimes on the continent they can be quite expensive, but in the UK, these are really quite in inexpensive. So 200 gram block of cream coconut just goes in. We don't need to do anything with it, just goes in there. Okay, and what's the nutritional profile of cream coconut like? In my head, it's kind of, it's quite a fatty ingredient, but not a bad thing. No, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why we use coconut. Even in the non-plant-based version, we put coconut oil in. And uh, this is because coconut is really high in what we call MCTs, medium chain triglycerides. So these are shorter chains of fat that are very easy to digest. So they get absorbed very quickly and it can be used as a fuel while you're doing endurance exercise. MCTs have been used for years during, uh, during endurance exercise. So actually the cream coconut has a really good nutritional reason to go in with the rice cakes as well. Okay, and are MCTs classed as saturated fats then? Yeah. So. Uh, when we look at something like uh, 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 the cream coconut, the MCTs would be a saturated fat. That means they don't have the, the double bonds. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's an unhealthy thing. You know, uh, recent research has actually shown that uh, coconut oil is one of the healthier fats that we can have. Okay, because... Uh you know, if you were having uh, saturated fat from animal products, yeah. it's kind of a bad thing, right? But actually a plant-based saturated fat, not a bad thing. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of new thinking around uh, all of the fats and, and, and how the fats work in the body. So it's not quite as simple as just that good and bad. A lot more of it is about how the fats might be processed. So are we looking at some of the uh, hydrogenated fats? So things like there are a natural saturated fats, such as the coconut oil, is really looked at now as being part of a healthy diet. So the next step is just for me to put the uh, uh, cream coconut in. 
the next ingredient that I'm going to put in is we've got about 30 grams of sugar and this is just normal sugar just normal white sugar okay and is that for flavor or I mean you know, for sweetness or is it for, for energy as well yeah so basically it's for both so what, what we're doing is we're getting a nice profile of the energy the type of carbohydrate that we've got within this so the sugar is a little bit the faster uh, energy delivery to the body and so the body you know when we exercise and we're exercising hard we're using carbohydrate all of the time the muscle and the brain but it's really important from that sweetness as well because without it the rice cakes are pretty sort of you know bland so adding the sugar gives it that little bit of sweetness but it's also a great energy source as well okay the Next energy ingredient we're using is coconut oil. And we use coconut oil in both the plant-based and non-plant-based. And as I said before, coconut itself, the fats in that is a really good fat for when we're doing endurance exercise. Um, What's the difference between creamed coconut and coconut oil? Well, actually there's the, the creamed coconut contains coconut oil as well. I'm just wanting to add a little bit extra. So I'm okay. adding about another 20 grams of coconut oil to this. So we're getting in total about 80 grams worth of coconut oil in the whole mixture. So this is for more energy? This is more. This is for more of the uh, coconut oil uh, energy within within this so this would be a really good rice cake for you know doing five six hours type of uh, type of riding type of uh, training okay so I'm just going to add that to it and one final ingredient then so vanilla bean paste yeah, so we're using uh, uh, some vanilla. Uh, this is purely for flavouring. So this is quite a posh one, using some uh, vanilla bean paste with it. That's how we roll. <laughs> Again, the, the swanyers will use different things for flavouring. So they might use some cinnamon or something like that. So you can put different flavourings in. Uh, with it. Uh, the, again, the, the swanyers will sometimes sort of mix it up a little bit uh, to try and keep the riders happy, just put some alternatives. So one of the really popular ones is them to put things like uh, Oreo biscuits in with the, with the rice cake. No yeah, yeah, the riders really like that. And what about like, you know, dried fruit or, yeah. or other nuts? Like, yeah. could you put peanut butter or almond butter yeah, in? Absolutely. So you can put nut butters in with these. Uh, it's not something that I would normally recommend for racing because when you put a lot of nut butters in, it really slows down the digestion with it. So it's going but to sit a bit more heavily on the stomach? It can sit a bit more heavily, but that's not necessarily a bad thing if you were doing like, you know, a five or six hour ride, then, you know, then that, that can be quite good as well nutritionally and it can add really good flavours to it. So the beauty of these then is that actually you can tailor the ingredients depending on the riding that you're going to be doing. So you've, yeah. you've almost got like a kind of an energy gel type, yeah. fast absorbed, uh, you know, low residue one, or you can have something where you've got like long, steady miles where you can fill it full of all sorts of funky ingredients. Yeah, I mean, one of the ones that works really nice is apricot. So you put apricot in it, it's almost like having jam within yeah. it. So yeah, there's lots of different different sort of adds, uh, things that you can add to it. But one of the things we always do when, when we're to race is just make sure there's a very plain and simple one because a lot of the riders just want the plain simple rice cakes and some of them want something a bit fancier. So I'm just going to put a small spoon of the vanilla bean paste in there. Now it smells really good Nigel but it doesn't look particularly great at the moment. Uh, are we going to give it a cheeky little stir? Yeah, so we just go. Yeah, we just like give it a little stir while it's in there. We don't have to go too too much with it. So it doesn't matter that the coconut's in big blocks. Nah, not really. Uh, the, I mean, you can break it up a little bit if you want beforehand, but once it's cooked, that's when we really give it a really, really, really good mix. And that helps to bind everything together. Do we need to stir it halfway through? No. No. no, not at all. So this is a mistake that people make when they're cooking rice. So this is no risotto? No, this is no risotto. No, what we do is we close the lid, we switch it on, and the rice cooker does its magic, and once it's cooked, it switches off. It's as easy as that. Okay, and if we're doing it on the hob, yeah. same principle applies. Stick a lid on, yeah. low heat, yeah. keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, so the, the way that you, you cook rice on, on the hob there is you put it on uh, medium to low heat, and once the rice is cooking, what you don't want to be doing is taking the lid off all the time because you're releasing the, the, the steam. So what you want to do is like when the rice is cooking well, you can spin the lid 
because uh, the, the, the steam will just lift the lid that little bit so you can spin it and that's when you know the rice is cooking. And then once the rice has actually absorbed all of the water, then it won't spin anymore. So once, it's, once you're in that position where you can lift the lid with the, uh, with the steam, you switch it to a low heat and you just let it sit there a little bit. Cooking hacks <laughs> with Nigel, who but, knew? But, you know, this is why I use a rice cooker because you just never get it wrong with it. But whereas you cook it on the hob, sometimes you can get it wrong. Okay. So we've closed the lid and we just uh, switched it on. So this is uh, quite a complicated rice cooker, but there you go, that's it. That's complicated, you yeah. pressed it twice. Yeah. So the, the simpler ones is only, you just press the button down once and that's it. I think so, even I can manage to press a button <laughs> twice. That does seem quite a straightforward recipe. And then we just leave this, it takes about 20, 30 minutes for it to cook. And uh, once it's cooked, it'll beep and then it just goes on to keep him warm. So then we just stir everything and then we put it in the next step of the process. Ah, so, so that's right. So I was thinking like you've got globs of like, yeah, you know, yeah. coconut cream or whatever, but yeah. actually you can stir it at the end when it's yeah. all melted. Yeah, exactly. And then that's when we mix it up, right. Okay, yeah. I tell you what, my stomach's rumbling already. I can't believe we're gonna have to wait 30 minutes and then stick it in the fridge. Okay. Can we make some energy balls whilst we're waiting? We'll do that. Right then, Nigel, snack number two, energy yeah. balls. Yeah. Why balls? Why balls? Well, basically, we can make them into balls or we can make them into little fingers. It okay. really doesn't matter. It's just what's going to fit easy into the into the pockets. It's okay. easy to mould them. All right, and this looks very different to our rice cake. So oats is yep. our is our primary source of carbs or, or dates here? Well, the dates are, well, both dates and oats provide us with carbs. They're a little bit different type of carbs that you get in oats than what you do to, uh, to dates, but, but basically they're both are really good carbohydrate sources. And uh, uh, we mix in different carbohydrates. We've also got some chia seeds. So the chia seeds are there to add other nutrients in there. So it's really good in some of the micronutrients. And it's also really good with uh, the healthy fats as well. Okay. And then we use some agave nectar to help bind it all together. And agave nectar comes from cactus. And again, it's basically pure carbohydrate. So we put it all into the, into the food processor. We give it a good whirl. Then we take it out and we just mold it into the shapes that we want. So no cooking in this instance. No we literally just wang our ingredients in yeah. the food processor, give it a blitz yeah. and then squash them. Absolutely. Nice. The, some of the added ingredients we can put in with it if we want are things like pistachio nuts, which will give us more protein. Okay. We can add some of the, the vegetable protein within there as well. So this is a, a mixed vegetable protein with pea and oat protein, different, different protein sources in there that, you know, it's unflavoured, so we can add that to it as well. And uh, Why yeah. would you want protein on the bike? So for some people, depending on what type of event you're doing, so this is much more of a, a long distance type of, of, uh, of snack food. So it'd be great for some of the ultra endurance type of events. It'd be really good for a long sportif or going out for a long ride at the weekend. And so what by adding some of the protein in there, you're just making it more of a complete food. Okay, whereas for, for someone doing a race, this might sit a bit more heavily on your oh, stomach. Yeah, it might you take longer to digest. You wouldn't, you wouldn't really use this in, uh, in like a road race or, or a crit or anything like that. This yeah. is really more of your, your slower, uh, but much more endurance, harder type of type of work. Also, they're really good snacks to have if you just you know if you're driving and you're traveling around as well. Cool. All right then, should we do some processing? Okay. So what we're going to do for this particular one, we've got 100 grams of oats, we've got 250 grams of chopped dates, we've got 50 grams of the chia seeds, and then I put those in and start processing it. And depending on the consistency and the texture, it will really depend on how much agave nectar I add. But okay. it's usually about 50 grams of the agave nectar. And again, so if I wanted to add the nuts, we can add the nuts as well. We can add things like the cocoa nibs as well. Things like this, if we just want to add those little extra bits. Nice. So we just put it all in. Let's blend. Now, Nigel, you were telling me that you've got to be a little bit careful about the motor in your blender because it gets quite sticky, right? Yeah. So you could kind of blow up your blender unless you've got... Yeah, so if you haven't got a really powerful blender like this, then what you'd want to do is use less mix. 
Okay. So you so you could use uh, something where you could have even used and L blenders for these, but you need to uh, just use less mixture with it okay. because otherwise it can burn out the motor. These are a really powerful motor, but most food processors will deal with it. But just scale down the side the the mix that you have there. Okay. So if you've got a top of the range carbon aero bike, you'll probably have a blender like this one. Exactly. Together. This is this is the uh, uh, the Pinarello of uh, kitchen kit. <laughs> nice. Right then, tray for our balls. Yeah, so we're going to put our balls in the tray. Uh, what I'm going to do is just put sprinkle some oats in there. You can actually use desiccated coconut for oh, this. Yeah. And then what we do is we just put the uh, the mixture in and we just we just got to make it into balls or little finger shapes, wherever, wherever we want. So what we're wanting with this per ball, we're wanting something of about that sort of size. That's about 30 grams. Okay. And that's going to give us about 20 grams worth of carbohydrate. Right. So are you, you going to do that? I'm going to do the honest, yeah. Right. Well, 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 well we're just going to stick all over you. So what, we, we'll just use our little finger. Okay. And we'll just put it in there, coat it and just make it into a little ball. Right. More finesse required. <laughs> than... I, would have, I would have put the oats on first, but anyway. Okay, they look pretty good, Nigel. Can I have one now? You can have one now, but they'd be better when they've been sat for about an hour or two hours in the fridge because the chia seeds will swell up with the fluid in there, so they're just a little bit easier to eat and well, it's a nicer texture. But you can have one. I'll have one now, and then I'll have one afterwards, and then I'll be able to let you know the difference. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, absolutely. And, and obviously, not stating the obvious, hygiene is really important, so we really washed his hands thoroughly before we were doing this. And if I were making these for other people, then I'd wear catering gloves as wow. well just to be super safe. That is really good, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you've got a lot of date flavour come through, which is a very good thing. A little bit of crunch from the kia seeds at the minute. That's right. That's good, that's really good. Okay, so let, let's pop them in the fridge. Okay. So the rice cook is finished, so I'm yep. going to lift the lid and then I'm going to give it a stir, make sure everything's mixed really well in. I'll give it a little taste and if it's not sweet enough, I'll just add a little bit more agave nectar. Okay. So the rice cook has done its magic. It's all cooked really well and I just mix it and it actually, the texture of it becomes a little bit like, like putty. It looks a little bit like baby food, nice. so yeah. I can see why it's appropriate for cyclists. Absolutely. For professional cyclists, particularly. <laughs> so they, they don't have to chew anything. So you can see everything's mixed really well in there. That is absolutely perfect texture. So Got I'll it. just give it a little taste. Now, for me, that's sweet enough. Okay. But for some of the pros, they'd want it sweeter. Really? They're not having it. This is how they're <laughs> going to have it. But you just get that bit of coconut with it. So I'll just give you a... Yes, please. Which that is that is actually really 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 good. Okay. Ooh. So what we do? You were wondering what the freezer bags were for, weren't you? Mm, that was really good. So what we do is we put all of the mixture into a freezer bag. Okay. We don't freeze it, but we do that just flatten it, and then as it cools, it sets. So I got the idea from using a freezer bag from Mario Perfundi who was a soigneur with British Cycling and then at Team Sky. Because I used to wrap it in cling film and he said, no, no, you can just use a freezer bag. So, well done, Mario. Good, well good done, hack, Mario. that. So we just put it all into, into the freezer bag. So what we're going to do now is just flatten it in the bag. So I zip it up, not right to the end, so that some of the air, the air can come out. Yeah. So we just squash it. Have you got to squish it together quite tightly so that it no, not holds really. together? No, no, it, it, it's amazing how well it, uh, it compacts. Now this bag, ah, oh, there we are, it's zipped together. And you'll see. That's pretty cool, that. That's pretty much it. And in effect, because it's hot, as it cools, obviously, the uh, air expands when it's hot, so when it cools, the air uh, contracts and it, in effect, vac packs it as well. So how long would that last? Because that's a really important thing with rice, isn't it? Yeah. So basically, what this, this will be good for two or three days. In the fridge? In the fridge. Uh, it doesn't freeze. If you freeze it, it dries out. So okay. people do try freezing rice cakes, that never works. What I recommend usually for people making it home is doing half a mix. Okay. And then half a mix will last, you know, two or three days, a couple of days rides, snacks and things like that, 
and it's rare. Okay, and what happens if you make your rice cake and then you have to travel to an event, for example, overnight? So, so it's just in your kit bag, wrapped up. Yeah. Is that going to be all right? Yeah. So what? Well, Away from a fridge? Yeah, no, it's, so if you wrap it, and then you can put it in a cool bag with like an ice block, and that'll okay. keep it cool. Right then, so our rice cakes come out of the fridge, whoa. Yeah, so like I said, it, they go pretty solid. It, yeah. become, it really sets, so you can see there that that is now like, I don't want to use the word a brick, because it's not that solid, but it really comes out from that sort of sloppy, ricey mixture to something that's quite solid. So, and you can see that in effect, because it was hot before, as it's cooled down, then in effect it's vacuum packed yeah. to shrink wrap. That's so, quality, isn't it? So again, and it, because everything it was piping up when it came out, then from a bug's point of view, there's no bugs going in there. So from a hygiene perspective, it's great. So what I do now is I just slice open the polythene and then the, this would get cut into about 20 pieces okay. and then we'd wrap it and we wrap it. I'm doing it as if we were wrapping it for the pros. Okay, and, cool. Uh, so we've got the special uh, foil here. So it's bake, baking foil on one side, aluminium foil, and on the other it's parchment. Nice. So this, you can buy it in this country. Uh, you can uh, get it in the supermarket uh, and it's made by Baker Foil uh, on rolls and I'm sure okay. it's available internationally as well. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. So, just going to slice this open. So, all we need to do is, is wrap the rice cake. So, so I'm going to stop you there, Nigel. Are you sure yeah. we need to eat them first? <laughs> we well, can't wrap it just in case it's revolting. So, <laughs> should we just have a small... Yeah, have a, have a try go. of one, Simon. Thanks. Oh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Cheers. This should be really good. Should always taste it anyway. They're really good, aren't they? Yeah. Like, we... it's kind of... It's unchallenging in the sense that the ingredients are really simple. But it's just really nice and kind of quite Moorish. But it's quite fresh as well in the mouth. So mm. you don't, and it's not difficult to eat. No, it's not. I, like, I cannot imagine there would be many nicer things coming out of your back pocket of your jersey mid-ride, especially, like you were talking earlier about going flat out in a race mm. or something. That's super good. Well, the whole idea with it is, you can take it out of your pocket, unwrap it with one hand and eat it. Because what you're trying to do when the guys are racing is reduce the risk of getting any bugs in the mouth. Because you've got to remember, hands on the handlebars, you're going through puddles, you're going through all sorts of muck and, and that. So when you're using, when you're wanting your race food, you don't want it really touched by no. the hands. So that's the whole idea with it. So that's why the Swaniers wrap it like this, so they can just take it out and wrap it with one hand if they've got to, and then eat it in the paper. Okay, so you better show us how to wrap it then. Now I've made you give me some. So the Swaniers, Mm -hmm. would, pr would probably laugh at my wrapping because they're so professional with it. But the whole idea is that you're wrapping it like a small parcel. Okay. So we just put in the, not that my Christmas presents are wrapped that well. So we just put it in there, roll it over. But you always fold over the edge like that. Okay. And the reason for that is that you can write on it what it is. Okay. So for this, they'd, they'd write rice. Simple. If it, if it were a panini, then they'd write there we panini. 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 Yeah, okay. And if there's different flavours, it might be like jam panini. I like it. Logic. There we go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So how many how many grams of carbs are in this? Because that's a really important thing when you're yeah. out riding, isn't it? It's to kind of so, keep a track of so your we intake. So we try and work on a bit of a modular system. Where, so every bit of race food is sort of between 20, about 25 grams worth of carbs. So there's okay. about 20, 20 to 25 grams of carbs in that. And so if you're only fueling on rice cakes, you might have three of these an hour. Absolutely. So yeah. I've worked with people riding Grand Tours and all they've eaten in the races has been rice cakes, a few gels and a few energy drinks. Wow. The rest of it. And that's, that's what they've eaten in the Grand Tours because the... The thing what we've got to remember with the rice cake is, is that it is very low residue. So basically, all of it gets digested and absorbed. So it's not creating fecal mass. Excellent. Now, what about our energy balls? Now, there are <clears throat> There's slightly a few fewer of these than there were when, when we first made them. And that may or may not be my fault. <laughs> but do they get wrapped in much the same way? Yeah, so you wrap them very much the same way. Um, the, uh, these are firmed up quite nice. They're still quite soft. So, you know, maybe a little bit more, bit, bit too much agave nectar, but when, when you get used to making them, you just sort of, 
get the uh, uh, get used to the mixtures. And so we just do exactly the same the same thing. So we just wrap that up, and we'd write on this balls. Would you? <laughs> Well, I mean, I suppose that is what they are. Yeah, cool, thanks. And again, are we talking 20 grams of carbs in there? So for these, there'll be about 30 grams. These are a bit, little bit heavier. Really, okay, yeah, so yeah. 20 grams of there, 30 grams in there, okay. But these are, but this is gonna be a much slower release type of carbohydrate. So this isn't one where we're going full gas, as we were saying before. This is the much longer, harder, sort of steady day. Okay, fantastic. Nigel, that is absolutely awesome. Not only are they two great tasting, energy bars, fuel, they're also super easy, aren't they? Yeah. Again, anyone, anyone can make those. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole idea with all of this for me is to keep it as simple as possible. So sometimes people make recipes a little bit complicated. If you've got to have this fancy thing or something like that, keep it really simple so anybody can do it. Yeah, and you're more likely to actually then do it and do it regularly as well. And, use it, and, there's, and everything we've made is suitable for the whole of the family. Fantastic. Cool. Well, there we go. As we mentioned at the beginning, uh, these recipes come from our new book written by Nigel, The Plant-Based Cyclist, and it is available now in the GCN shop. So do make sure you go and take a look at that. It's not just recipes. There's a whole load of information in there, isn't there, about how you fuel correctly and recover correctly. Am I right? Absolutely. So it's got everything you need to know if you're wanting to follow a plant-based uh, plant diet and be the best cyclist you can be. That's so cool. Right. Uh, we have uh, more recipes with Nigel on the channel. So if you want to watch one, you can get through to it by clicking on screen now. Otherwise, I suppose you'd better go for a bike ride, Nigel. Yeah. Should we do it? Let's get out. <laughs>